Okay, first thing we're going to take a look at is something called a relation. Okay, you have to have a relation to start with before you can determine whether or not you have a function. All right, now basically a relation is just going to be for us a set of ordered pairs, two things that are being compared to one another. So you're going to have things that you might see some set brackets, and then inside that set bracket, you're going to see a set of ordered pairs. All right, so maybe like the ordered pair 2, 6. Remember plotting points on a coordinate plane? An ordered pair has an X and a Y coordinate with a set of parentheses around it. Okay, so we're going to have a set of ordered pairs. So we're just going to make up some numbers here. 3, 2, 4, 5. I can even throw some negatives in here. Negative 7, 1. There can be a lot. There can be just a few. Okay, it doesn't make any difference. But that, as it sits right there, is just a relation. There, we're comparing two groups, and the groups are the x coordinates, and we're comparing that to the y coordinates. Okay, now from that, you can be asked several questions. You can be asked to identify the domain. Okay, so you need to be able to know that the domain is the x coordinates. We'll put x coordinates in parentheses. All right, so we know that these are ordered pairs x, y, x, y, x, y, x, y. So the, all of the x's are considered to be the domain. Now, because this original relation has a set of set brackets around it, we're going to write our domain with set brackets around it. We're going to take the first number in each of them, and honestly, I would just do them in order left to right as you see them. So I would write down 2, then I would write down 3, the next one is 4, the next one is a negative 7. Now, some textbooks are going to want you to put them in order from smallest to largest. All right, I'm not going to want you to do that because if you start putting them in a different order, if I've got to put the negative 7 first and then the 2 and then the 3 and then the 4, all right, it's more easily that you're going to make a mistake. If you look at this left to right and pull the numbers out, you're more likely going to get it right. Now, if a number duplicated, let's suppose this ordered pair was 2, 5, you would not write down a 2 twice. You would only do it once. So as soon as you write a number down, if it appears again, you don't write it a second time. Okay. Now, there's another vocab word <clears throat> that's going to, from a relation like that, they're going to ask you to find the range. And that's going to be all the y coordinates. As a sample up here, let's go ahead and write x on the first one and y on the second one. I'm not going to do it on each ordered pair, but we'll just put it in that one spot. Okay, so again, you've got to memorize range is all the y coordinates. So you're going to come up here and you're just going to look at all the y's and then you're going to write them down. You'll put them in a set brackets. So then I'll write the first one down six and then I'll do two and then I'll do five, and then I'll do the one. So now I've come up with the domain, I've come up with the range. All right, so is that pretty straightforward? Questions, kind of easy, right? You have to memorize which one's which. Your x coordinates are your domain, your y coordinates are your range. All right, now the other thing that they're gonna ask you to do is they're gonna ask you to take this relation and decide whether or not it is a function. All right, so here's the question. I'm going to do like, I don't know, as a EX for a question. Is this relation a function? And it, that's a yes or no question. All right, what you're going to do is you're going to go look at all your X coordinates. All right, so I'm going to look at that 2. I'm going to look at the 3 the 4, and the 7, okay? I'm going to look at all of those. And you're going to ask yourself, do any of those numbers repeat? Do any of those numbers repeat? No. If they do not repeat, then yes, it is a function. So is this relation a function? The answer is yes. All right, and then in parentheses underneath here, because just looking at that, you may not, looking back at your notes, you might not make sense or remember what we talked about. So in parentheses, let's put um, none of the 
x coordinates duplicate. Okay, so that's how I came up with, yes, it is a function. If this was a 2 and then a 3 and then another 2, if I had a 2 right there, then the answer would be a no because you had some duplicates. All right, so that's a pretty straightforward concept there too. Okay, we good so far? Okay, now another question that they're going to ask you is they're going to say, okay, now I want you to take this relation, which we know is a function. I mean, it doesn't matter that it is a function. All right, I can take any relation and I can draw it in what's called a mapping. So draw the relation as a mapping. So mapping is a vocab word. Draw the relation as a mapping. So if you're doing this on your paper, then you could literally draw it. When you do this on the a question online, it's probably going to have the pictures for you and you will choose, all right, like multiple choice type question. But a mapping basically is a picture of two bubbles. So they have one bubble right next to another bubble. All right, now depending on the textbook that you're looking at or the online program that you're using, you might see an X labeled for the first bubble. You might see a Y labeled for the second bubble. All right, X, Y. The other way that it might be labeled is they might label this as domain and they might label this as range. But technically, they don't have to label anything for you. Your first bubble is always going to be your domain or your x coordinate. Your second bubble is always going to be your y's or your range. Okay, now you've already listed your domain over here. You pulled them out. You have to put all of these numbers in the domain circle. All right, so I'm going to write down a 2, a 3, a 4, and a negative 7. All right, this circle or bubble here is labeled Y. It's labeled the range. You've already pulled the range numbers out. All right, so I'm going to put all of these numbers in the range. So I'm going to put a 6, a 2, a 5, and a 1. The mapping part is you're going to tell how these numbers are connected or what's the relationship between the first set and the second set. You're going to actually use the relation here. 2 is mapped to 6. 2 is mapped to 6, so 2 is mapped to 6. You're going to draw an arrow, it says 2 is mapped to 6. 3 is mapped to 2, the 3 is mapped to the 2. The 4 is mapped to the 5. The negative 7 is mapped to the 1. So once the arrows are drawn, then there's the mapping. You're just showing how they are mapped together. Now, if you wrote them in a different order, all right, you can write them in any way you want. If you were in a different order, would some of them cross? Yeah, and that's okay. All right, if that 2 was mapped to a 6 and then this was a 2 and it was 2 mapped to a 5, would the 2 go to two different numbers? Yeah, so however it is mapped as your ordered pairs is how you're going to map it down here in a, in a mapping. Okay, but like I said, on a computer, you can't draw this, right? You would have to draw this by hand if you were doing a paper pencil worksheet type thing. All right, if it's in Math Excel or it's informative, they're probably going to give you four different pictures, and then you're just going to have to pick which one has been mapped correctly. So it'll be like in a multiple choice format. Okay, but introduction to functions so far, are we all doing pretty good? I mean, this is like not hard. This is all pretty straightforward. Okay, all right, now let's go up a notch and make it look a little bit more like algebra, okay? Now, there's something called function notation. In function notation, I'm going to put a little f of x next to it. All right, now I don't have to use f of x. f is going to be the name of my function, f. But I could also have a g of x, and then my function name would be g. I could also have an h of x, and the function name would be h. That thing that is in front there is just the name of the function. All right, so I'm going to highlight those. They're not 
variables. The number, the letter there in front are not variables. All right. These letters that are out in front are the function name. So it's the F function, it's the G function, it's the H function. And what they're trying to do is they're trying to take what we have already done with our algebraic expressions and just show you a more fancy notation called function notation. So basically what this is going to look like, you're going to maybe be given some type of function. All right, so you might be given f of x is equal to maybe say a 2x minus a 5. So I have a function. My function is 2x minus 5. Uh, the name of that function is f. It's the f function. Okay, and the thing about function notation, if I have an x here, then that means my variables over here have to be an x. And for you guys, it's always going to be an x. Okay, we're going to leave that as an x. So whatever letter is here has to be over here because that function is written in terms of x. Okay, so we're talking about a little more fancy notation here. Now, you are going to need to be able to evaluate. And then let's maybe say, I'll do a couple here. Let's evaluate f of negative 3. What that tells me to do is take negative 3 for my x and put it into the f function. Well, my f function is up here. How many places is there an x? There's only one place that there's an x, right? This is almost like, here's my little baby algebraic expression, and I'm going to replace the x with negative 3. We've been doing that forever. Now they're just going to do the exact same thing, but with this function notation. This is telling you x is negative 3, and I need to put it into the f function. Okay, so to work this out, I'm going to write down, I'm probably going to write down, uh, let's just put an equal right after that, 2. Two squished up against the x means times, right? So I can either do a dot or I can do a set of parentheses. So dot, plug in the negative 3 for the x, and then minus 5. Order of operations, you've been doing this with your algebraic expressions. 2 times negative 3 is negative 6 minus 5. What's a negative 6 minus 5? <coughs> negative 11, thank you. So all that is, when I say we're going to use function notation, it's just written differently than what you have are used to. Up to now, we've given you algebraic expressions, so we've just given you this, and then we've told you x equals negative 3, and then you have done this. So now we're going to throw the f of x in front of it. We're going to do f of negative 3, so we're not going to specifically write on the paper x equals negative 3. When you see it in this notation, that tells you the x is negative 3. And then you're going to plug it in. You're going to evaluate it just like you always have been. Okay, does that make sense? So when my number changes, if I do another example, if my number changes and I do an f of maybe, say, 6, what's that tell me to do? That tells me to take the 6 and do what with it? Plug it in for x. Okay, so I come back up here. I look at my function. My function says 2 times x, so I'm going to replace the x with the 6, and then minus 5. 2 times 6 is, what is that, 12? Take away 5, it's going to give me a 7. Boy, I'm not being very consistent with my colors, am I? Did this one in red, did that one in black. Okay, so is function notation pretty simple? Okay, now... Let's do this. Let's take this idea of function notation and connect it to domain and range.